Hey, thanks for joining me again for another video in which we're going to be looking at the more in-depth AK and Canem's wiring uh, and hopefully get onto the dashboard. Please give me a like and subscribe. Uh, let's go. All right, so I'm just going to go through a couple of things as per the instructions. Um, so first of all, red thick and red thick and white. Um, so they are plugged in uh, down onto the starter motor. It's actually a bit neater than you think. Um, I've got the AK... Uh, I've got the Canem's loom in there as well, so um, that also needed two ring connectors connected to the uh, to the pole there. So I've got a total of four things connected to um, the positive pole, and then the little white is the uh, kind of exciter. Um, so that's all. That's all good. Um, then I've got my temperature sender here, which of course we still have to test that it does register correctly. Otherwise, we'll swap it out for the AK one. Um, so I've just done a, a quick earth up to the uh, block here and then um, the, the signal goes into the AK wiring loom. So that's both the red six and the whites. Um, now the blue and orange I've actually stripped out because we don't need that for our LS3 engine. Now uh, you may remember that I am not using the AK um, sender and light sender unit. So I have stripped out the black brown because we don't have the light there and the brown white uh, goes to uh, the new location of my sender unit which you may remember is uh, right down on the bottom end of that so basically I pulled the um, the black and is it uh, the brown and white wire all the way back through and then gave it a new route all the way down to that sender so the oil pressure light is actually going to come off the Canems. So let me just have a look if I can show you something there. So this is some Canems in instructions and we have the oil pressure warning lamp output brown. And now the Canems uh, loom has got a load of connections here coming off and we're going to be using the brown to, I'm going to put it into one of these connections. I'm not going to need any more. And I'm going to pop it out. I can't remember in, on which one it was. Or I'm going to make a whole new uh, little connector and put in some, some of these uh, extra connections so that it can be quickly um, disconnected from the dash. But anyway, that's going to my dash warning light lamp. Okay, so bear with me. Um, right, the pink, uh, that is meant to connect to the Canems. So the pink goes all the way back to this dash connector. So I am just going to go ahead and connect it up to, I think it was the white cable on the Canems. Um, now I could pop that pink out and do the white straight in, but I think it's a little bit short and I want to remember the colour code in that AK used. So I think I'm going to keep a, a short section of pink and uh, connect it to this white. And that's for the um, rev counter. All right, uh, we, I stripped out the black and violet cable as well from the uh, AK loom, because that's not required. And I also took out the blue and orange, because that is not required. Uh, this red-orange went to that little water sen uh, temperature sensor that we're still testing. Um, now the red thick is this alternator. Um, so that is for going on to the hole on the back here now on a couple of other builds I actually threaded this this wire back into uh, into the uh, cockpit there so that uh, just to tidy up the engine bay really so I had this cable going round inside and then it literally just popped out uh, up here and did that short hop over to uh, the pole here but for this one I've decided to go round so I'm going to make use of, uh, I'm going to double up some P-clips here. I'm going to use the bolt here for this P-clip, run it through another P-clip just to show Mr. Ivy, man, it's all well supported and away from the engine. I had to put another P-clip in here just to keep that. So when it's all nice and tight, it will uh, look a lot neater. Um, not sure of my change of uh, decision there, but um, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't want to uh, mess around with this nice hole that we got going here with the one, one cable coming out. 
Um, so yeah, we took the blue out because that's not uh, required because we are using um, the Canem's uh, loom for the uh, for this alternator. Um, so previously, uh, AK would give you a short amount of cable, and you'd have to jump the blue and maybe take another cable back to the back to the uh, pole here. But we're not doing that. We're using the Canem's one, and hopefully that will work fine. So we didn't need the blue. Um, yeah, we didn't need to do any jumpers or anything, so that's all fine. So, uh, so on the Canems, yeah, we're not going to be uh, using the orange. Um, not this flat shift uh, uh, rev counter yet. Yeah, white into pink, and then we need to do something with this green. I can't remember what at the moment. And then, like I said, oil pressure warning lamp. Uh, that's brown from the Canem straight to the dash. So we're all good there. All right, around to the front of the car, we've got these two blue blacks and they are actually to the horn. So I'm just gonna uh, drop them down uh, down here because uh, the horn will be mounted on a cross member somewhere down there. So that can just hang there. Uh, out the front, we've got, obviously got um, main headlights and indicators uh, on both sides. So we need to finish that up. And we've got a couple of fly leads inside. Um, I failed to, f to remember uh, that one of these, um, so the green and green, black and brown, which is this one, uh, that actually is to the windscreen washer motor. So that needs to be fed all the way down through the grommet, which I hope is big enough to take this extra cable. So uh, a bit disappointed that's not in the sort of main leg that goes all the way down there. <coughs> Never mind. And then we have this uh, grey brown to electric fuel pump. I'm pretty confident I'm not using that uh, because I think the control comes from the Canems. So let's go and have a little review. Uh, yes, I am right, uh, for, certainly for my uh, setup here. So there is a, a relay already from Canems that's pre wired, uh, I think, with um, 86 and uh, 30. Uh, or 85 pre-wired yes 80 these bottom two uh, so what i need to be doing is putting a, a, a positive supply permanent positive supply to uh, 30 and then 87 goes all the way to the fuel pump positive and then I can just earth the, uh, the the negative of the fuel pump and that completes it. I usually take the earth, earth all the way back and do it with another couple of earths up in the dash. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Uh, so I can cut those wires off that I just showed you and I can probably use them if they're long enough. All right, next up is getting this fan out of the way. Um, so what we need to be doing, we need to be finding the relay uh, that has the big thick black and green uh, wire in, which you can just see at the back. Now you don't touch that, that's just to find the correct relay. Now what you want to do is slide out that thin black wire and uh, and insert the uh, green thin green wire from the Canems, which I've got uh, just here. So that thin green wire con controls the fan and it needs to go into where that black, black wire is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide that black wire out and just tuck it out of the way, cut it shorter, don't need it anymore. And I'm going to put the correct connector on the end of this uh, thin green wire from the Canems and uh, put it in there and put the relay back in. And that is that. Uh, on the other end of the fan uh, wire, that's down there, down here. So um, there's a black wire in here, which I've already cut short. We don't need the black wire in here. All we need is the black green and this brown and uh, and we just connect that into uh, to the fan via the fuse that we that we uh, have sort of put in there um, I can't remember but I think to get the fan moving the correct way uh, have I made a note of that I think you do the blue on the f on the fan to the brown on the loom. So the blue wire that's on the fan here, I'm, I'm going to be connecting to the uh, to the brown, and I think that gets the fan rotating and pulling uh, the the, air, the correct way through the radiator. So we're just down looking at my fan connections now. So I've got uh, the black green going into the black, and then the brown uh, connected straight through to the blue. 
And remember, you've got to put a 30 fuse in there. Right, so we're nearly finished up here. Uh, we've still got to put some power and uh, wire up the fuel pump into the canems. Um, before we do that, you've got a long black and white fly lead coming from the AK loom, and that's to go to your reverse on your gearbox if you've got a TKO gearbox. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but I actually ran some wires up from the proper connector. So I've uh, cut my black and white wires short and I'm just going to uh, connect them. Uh, I don't think the polarity matters. Um, uh, I'm just going to connect them up there. Uh, time to finish up the wiring then for this Canem's loom. Uh, so you've got the two relays here. Um, this right hand relay is mostly pre-wired but the thin red wire just needs a switched power. So I have that coming uh, uh, coming out uh, here and uh, I will give it a switched power from the handy um, one that's already on the AK loom, which is the uh, yellow cable. So that's all good. And then that left hand relay with the green wire coming out of it did have me confused, did check with Dave at Canems. Uh, I didn't want it, uh, I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything to do with the fan. It's not, it's all fuel pump. So you can see there, um, the fuel pump needs a permanent uh, power and the other side, that red cable is actually going to the positive of the fuel pump all the way down underneath the car. So uh, excuse the colour coordination there, but uh, that was a nice thick cable I had for the permanent and uh, I'd already chosen uh, red to come out of the positive fuel um, pump side. So that is all complete. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to buzz a couple of holes up underneath and um, and basically suspend them up there um, within the realms of the uh, of the metal bars there so that uh, when a cover or removable panel gets put on uh, they don't hinder it. They'll just be a little, a little bit further set back. So I do believe I've pretty much done with the wiring. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, fly leads here that uh, go to the USB socket that will be placed uh, in the side of the glove box. Uh, so they're just quick disconnects. Uh, the stereo will be powered and uh, speaker wires for the rear will be actually going underneath this curved tunnel um, out the back, short little hop up into the boot and to, to an amp and stuff there and also permanent power will come straight from the battery etc via a fuse and come up underneath this curved tunnel which is really handy nice safe area, stick them in some conduit they'll come up here, um, I'll wire them into the end of this loom so then I've got a couple of uh, quick disconnects to go with the other dash disconnects so I'm pretty happy with that and how that's going to go. I'll cover that in a later video. Um, so we're all, we're all good there. So the only other wiring I think that we had left over was these two leads from the Canem's wiring loom and that's to the gearbox. Now one of them is some sort of flat spot detector so that um, doesn't let you change into reverse until it knows that it's uh, uh, at standstill, I think. And the other one is the speedo that goes straight into the canems, but I'm not using that either because I'm taking the pulse um, straight from the side of the gearbox straight into the uh, into the speedo, um, and then earth in the other one. So um, so I don't need either of those, and I just need to get some advice whether I can just cut them nice and short and uh, put a nice end on, or uh, in, in which case I'll take them right back right back to here. Otherwise, I'm just going to loop loop this um, bit of cable around and uh, zip tie it all neatly to the other cable so it doesn't look too uh, in the way and obtrusive. So that's that. So on we go with the dashboard. Uh, so it's always been a bit of a contentious decision uh, putting a stereo into the car, but I just wanted to bring it up, make it a bit more modern, and plus I think. It's so much handier to have a, a large screen to display maybe your Waze uh, or your Google Maps, etc., rather than having to try and install um, uh, an iPhone holder. So the stereo I've decided to use does have the uh, Apple CarPlay and the Android Connect. Uh, so I think that's really good. And yeah, you can definitely hear some tunes when you're cruising down a motorway, uh, rather than maybe putting uh, earbuds in, which I think uh, separates you from the uh, from the outside world a bit too much. So we're going to go for that. Um, however, it does make a lot of uh, more difficult decisions 
and that's really uh, where to put all the dials and all the switches because it can start looking a little bit clustered. Now I did think about going a little bit uh, kind of retro styling and that is to have the rev counter more underneath the steering wheel and uh, and you know the speedo uh, just off to the left and have a different arrangement of dials. Um, and that does look kind of good, but uh, I'm not into the retro look. I'm not having push-pull switches, etc. And I do think that uh, an even uh, look uh, uh, mirror image does look uh, aesthetically better as well, a bit more pleasing to the eye. So uh, let's go and have a look, see what I, I'm deciding on. All right, so this is my first pass. It obviously uh, needs a lot more work, um, but basically I'm thinking I'm gonna have my range of uh, switches all along the bottom including the handbrake button. Uh, this will be the screen. It will be on the brake here, but I think that might look kind of cool. I'm gonna have a return, a little bit of a return here over the brake uh, of uh, seven or eight mil. Nice leather turned in, in, into there. And I think it'll look quite good having the screen kind of just inset. So we'll just have to see how that looks. I was thinking about putting it on the flat, but uh, I think the angle might be a, a bit harder to see. And it needs to be seen because otherwise there's no point in having it. Uh, I did have a think about putting it up here and that still might be a good decision. Uh, the unit is only about 70 uh, mil deep, but I think there might be some interaction. I need to check with uh, the pipes that come from the heater up to the air vents. So I will have another look at that. That might be preferable. Um, and then we'd have the row of dials along here. So we'll have a look, but at the moment, I think we're gonna go for this. Uh, I'd have the four dials here for oil, water, fuel, uh, amps, and then the, the clock up here. I would offset the starter button, because that's a, just a one-off. It doesn't need to be a mirror image of anything. And uh, obviously, uh, speedo and rev counter in the usual places. Um, I would probably put the lights up here. I would probably do... Um, you know, three, two, and one. Uh, I think that that's got to be um, some sort of warning lights up here, then two indicators evenly there, and then if I've got another one, uh, just put that separately there. So we're kind of going for that at the moment, but uh, I will just measure up uh, the screen and everything again, uh, and just see if I can move it around. So this is where I am at, um, not my preferred layout. Uh, I had several different struggles. Uh, the first struggle was the fact that even though this unit uh, is not very deep, it's only about 70 centimetres, uh, the angle that it was going in at was fouling against uh, things sticking out the back. So different spaces and gaps needed to be made uh, so that uh, the angle of this um, missed, you know, the dials, wherever it was, it was initially going to be a, a lot lower down with the dials higher up, but I just couldn't make that work. And then, you know, I just had the thought that perhaps this was the most important thing to look at and the dials not so much. You only have a cursory look. Obviously, fuel's really important uh, and temperature. But again, just a cursory look and maybe uh, something that isn't going to need uh, a lot of a lot of looking and uh, like a, like a radio and uh, and your route map, etc. So, you know what? That's that's where it is. Um now this does look really nice it's only just big enough for uh, for my unit uh, i'm not having a large plastic surround i'm just going to poke this uh, through so it's completely flush and uh, i've already tried it. it looks absolutely awesome so by the time this has got some leather on it and uh, just that display just uh, just um, filling up that gap there it does look actually bloody nice so the only thing i've got to do now um is fit some buttons uh, along the bottom for all the side lights, headlights, uh, hazards, etc. Um, and uh, I'm not going to put the warning lamps in yet because I'm still actually not absolutely sure how many I need and what I'm doing, uh, mainly because the handbrake uh, confuses me a little. Uh, I think I need another handbrake light to show, you know, when the, um, uh, the electric brake is on or off but uh, I'm not kind of sure what light that is or whether it uses the current warning lights that uh, I, I, I already have. So I need to just do a little bit of research on that and uh, we can move on. Uh, so there we go, just a little update. I've got everything in there. Uh, I've got the USB inside. I've got the starter button over there, just below what will be uh, indicators, I think. 
Uh, all looking pretty good. Just ordered a um, parking button for bottom right and a uh, voltage ignition kind of light warning lamp for the space at the top. Um, so I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that actually. It's all looking quite good. Um, obviously nothing is lined up exactly and there's some gaps around the dials obviously because uh, the holes are a little larger to make way for uh, leather. Um, but I'm quite liking that. All pretty good. So um, very pleased. We, can, we need to get on with the wiring. All right, so the wiring is about to start, but uh, just a couple of points before I do. Uh, with my extra wide heater, uh, the returns uh, just inside there um, from the dash do hit the heater. Um, so I cut them a little bit shorter just so I could put the dash in the correct position. And then just to cover up any nasties uh, down the side, I just uh, P40'd um, a couple of plastic strips there uh, just shaped a little bit so by the time that's all leathered and uh, uh, everything else is uh, is carpeted here then we should be in a good shape for uh, the IVA man so uh, pleased with that dead easy to do obviously I just um, marked roughly where they were meant to go got the dash out p40'd it and uh, just to hold it and then p40'd it a bit more once it all gone off and uh, that should look good when it's all leathered up uh, so that's all good and just the other side there um, made my uh, uh, hole for the ignition key and just this side is my engine start nice and out of the way so it doesn't sort of take anything away from <laughs> uh, the dash there so uh, we are going to try and start wiring okay so dead easy to start um, with the little looms for each of the dials so i'm going to put all, all of those in and then uh, they're going to be my easy wins. So we'll get to those in a second. I thought about tethering my uh, harness uh, to the side of the uh, unit to there. Uh, so there's absolutely no tension at all going to be put onto, the, uh, onto any of the wires and terminals. So you can see me just uh, lining that up just there. I'm going to put a P-clip in later. And then we're just going to get on and do some really easy wins while we haven't got to deal with the harness. I'm going to do the lighting wires there to each of the uh, little buzz bars and uh, do all the earths that I need to do to those little bars, bars as well. So I've got one for earth, that top, that bottom left one, and then I've got the lighting one above it. And uh, just nice and steady with all the easy wins first. Okay, different angle here. So basically all I'm doing is the quick wins. Uh, first thing I've done is tethered uh, this up here. Uh, I figured uh, because I've got this extra gap here, uh, it can hide a bolt. Um, so it'll be less stress on the harness when you're plugging and unplugging, etc. I expect this final sort of position to be, you know, by the time you plugged everything in, it'll all sort of be hanging like this plugged into uh, the other connectors something like that uh, so i am literally just going for easy wins uh, i'm doing all the sensor wires because uh, they're all la easily labeled up uh, so i've been just referring to the instructions uh, for example um, i've done some lights as well so indicator light here left uh, is green red so i'll be taking finding the green red and feeding it around to the uh, to the indicator here um, Actually, is that left, right? Anyway, the correct one. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, over there, left indicator and right indicator. So I'll be feeding those around. Um, and then, um, you know, when it comes to... Well, the only one I haven't been able to find so far as I work my way down the list is high beam. Uh, so the high beam light on the dash goes to earth and the wire that feeds it is meant to be purple white. But unfortunately, there is no purple white in the loom. So that needs a question. I suspect it might be a sort of blue white, but uh, I'm going to wait to be told. Um, other easy wins, you know, I've uh, I, I've got the fuel gauge uh, wire, and that needs black green. So literally, I found my fuel. This is these white blacks are, are, are the uh, wires that receive the signals, if you like. So I've literally just hooked that up to um, whatever I just said, black green. Um, and done the same with the water and the oil. Now remember my oil is going to my new pressure sender location and the light uh, which is going up here has a different source so I'm not going to use the cable that it says is for the light off of here that's coming from the canems. 
and I did plug it, the light into a spare hole on here. Can't remember which one right now, so I'll just have a little look back, but I think it's this one here, go into a spare port, uh, spare hole. So I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to uh, just feed that back and use the spare hole. Uh, it could be, it could be the same one actually, uh, where that black, uh, brown white is coming in. I think that's from coming from the Can-Ms. So, uh, so I'll just be able to plug it into there and then I will be able to use the correct cable. I'll just double check that. Uh, so there you go. Um, you know, all the illumination wires go to the illumination uh, bar here, all the earths. So I'm attempting to keep them flat on the deck here. When all the wires are in following these paths, I'll be putting some tiny little zip ties around. Uh, I may even put a zip tie uh, in some uh, P38 uh, so it's stuck to the uh, back of the dash and then uh, be able to zip tie uh, these all down neatly. But they all seem to be pretty good, all following a path. Um, certainly better than the bird's nest I've kind of had before, I guess. But we'll see how it goes because there's an awful lot to go in. But basically, yeah, for now, just easy wins. Any earth go to earth, any illumination goes to the illumination. And I'm just uh, just going on down. And then it's easy to see what you've got left. Hopefully I'll only have six or seven wires left that I might be a bit stuck on, but then they're easier to sort out. Okay, so the next section I just uh, did, I uh, got four earth wires. Uh, I presume they put four in uh, because you need an earth uh, going to a couple of these lights up here and something else. Anyway, um, obviously I've got uh, a bar here uh, that I'm earthing everything to. So I joined all these four together uh, and then ran a large earth all the way around uh, to the bar there so that is now earthing everything on the bar all right so another little update here um, just by simply going down the connections uh, on each of these so I'm finding 11 pin plug go and find the 11 pin plug with the uh, you know whatever cable you want to look at first so let's have a look say uh, uh, red blue low fluid light so we go to the 11 pin plug, which is this large black one. We find the red blue coming out of it. And uh, then we go and follow it all the way around and it's going into my uh, low fluid light up here. And then you see what the other side's meant to do. You can refer back to the other diagram to see what the other side's meant to be doing, uh, which would be this one. So you'd find your low fluid light uh hydraulic fluid warning so we've got one side and then the other side uh looks like it goes to the power so we plug the other side into into the power so that's what you need to do uh it can be a little bit confusing those instructions because red white from the dials and gauges is illumination but red white from here is actually power uh, which of course is then green to the uh, to the gauges, so don't get those confused. However, don't always take my word for it. Good to go and check. I have been wrong in the past, but I think this is all good. So it's all fairly tidy. I'm looking forward to getting uh, some tiny zip ties and uh, bundling all these together and keeping the runs nice and flat and low. Um, all pretty good. I uh, got that earth uh, all bundled up into one large earth and that's going up to there. I uh, just had to find a large thick uh, red so make sure you find the correct red and uh, that has got to go to my uh, ignition so that's all good. So we are whittling it all down. Um, so we've only got these left uh, so a good two or three of these are like fan uh, I know I've got three, which are ha uh, the sort of handbrake, uh, gas, um, handbrake ram. Um, and then we've got a few going to the starter button, etc. So uh, looking forward to getting those done, but you know, slow and steady. Uh, of course, we've got uh, quite a lot of wiring to do on all the Savage switches. So a few of those wires will be going to the Savage switches, such as Hazard, etc. But then it tells us to jump, um, to jumper from where it's going to to another pin 
Uh, so we need to look at all that. And a couple of wires may e even go from here all the way back up to the indicators. So that'd be fun. Um, but I can't quite remember, so I need to go and double check all that. Um, but, you know, slow and steady. So uh, I'm going to carry on trying to uh, get rid of some of these. But um, not too bad. All looking fairly tidy uh, and less of a sort of bird's nest, if you like. So it would be good to tie all these up and I think it'll look uh, pretty smart. Right, so um, you'll remember from the gearbox, I've taken the Speedo sensor cable and well, there's two cables coming out of the Speedo uh, sensor on the side of the gearbox. I've earthed one of them. I don't think it matters which one you do. Um, and the other one is going to send the pulses to the Speedo. So I put all that weight all the way around. Uh, this thick red is from the gearbox with the pulses. And uh, I've put it into that spare, the spare uh, hole that the high speed fan uh, or one of the fan speeds was going into, which is this black yellow, because we're not using that. Because uh, uh, just with a, a moment, uh, a push button um, switch, you can only have one speed, right? It hasn't got uh, three three settings on it. Anyhow, so I, I chopped off that black yellow because we're not using it. That gave me a spare spade in there. Uh, and then we go from that spare spade, which is here, um uh, oh, down down here actually down in that uh, down in that corner um so that is the black yellow that's not been used but i'm going to keep the cable there uh and plug that into my speedo so all the way from the speedo all the way into this black yellow into the sensor wire that should read the pulses from the gearbox so that's what i'm doing in in my build and i did that in my last one as well of course, if you've got a different way of uh, reading the pulses, um, then uh, you don't want to be doing that. But uh, that's just my way of using a spare socket. So uh, on the on the quick disconnect, rather than having to do a, another wire and another little connector or something like that. Uh, what else have we do, been doing? Um, so I've extended uh, some wires here, black, purple, thick red, thick yellow all go to the ignition switch. Uh, I can't remember what side at the moment, but uh, we do that. And then out of here goes to, um, goes to the start button, which is, which is here. So I'll uh, have to show you that in a second, but we are doing pretty well. We've got less cables. So uh, a couple of these are fan, fog, um, uh, and uh, another starter but, uh, button cable, I think. But uh, quite a lot of these are going to have to start going down to the uh, down to the switches that I've got. So we'll be tackling that in a minute. Okay, so we're actually still doing all the easy wins. Anything that's uh, nicely marked up that we can handle. Uh, so handbrake uh, switch. Put the cables in there, hoping that's the right way round. I do know that I had a different way round uh, on my previous car before it went off to paint. Um, it didn't seem to cause too much hassle by just simply trying some different combinations and then I got it right. I'm pretty sure I took a picture of the correct combination and this is it. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. A um, couple of little easy wins here. Uh, the fan. It's only a two, two speed as we know, because we're not using the black yellow. Uh, so that, that was good there. So hopefully we're on the right pins there. Not too much uh, aggro if we have to uh, switch both of those onto these two or something, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I have referred back to my first build, um, so hopefully that's all good. Um, so I'm doing the easy wins uh, before we get to the uh, wires that go on here that need little jumpers. They are very small terminals and uh, and you need to be quite careful. Um, I do suggest maybe a little drop of solder on those because you're going to have to unplug them all when this uh, dash goes off to, to, to the trimmers, etc. So, um, you know, a good crimper, definitely. Maybe a little drop of solder as well just to make sure those you know, little those wires do stay in the little uh, connectors because some of them are uh, a bit fatter than normal, if you, if you like, uh, and you still need to get two into the crimp. So um, so that's good. Uh, Establish that um, probably don't need those, not cut them short yet in case, until I know. Once we know and we've had a successful start and everything works, then I can 
cut them off a bit shorter, put some heat shrink on or something. So that's for the rev counter. Um, still got to suss out if I need these two for the speedo. I don't think I do need those either. Um, because we've got the signal wire coming in all the way from the gearbox. We've got illumination, we've got earth, we've got power. So that's all good. Uh, indicators, all good. Uh, with the correct side going to uh, each one. So we've got a green, white, uh, green, red for each side. You know that is correct for this, uh, the legs that are going up each side of the car. So you should know which colour is which. Um, what, we, what else we've got? Uh, um, Low, low fluid in the brakes. We've got headlights. Uh, we have got um, voltage or battery kind of light here. And we've got a handbrake light here. So I need to feed that from uh, the handbrake switch. So when I uh, turn on the handbrake and the ram engages, I need to be engaging a light as well. So I've got some instruction how to do that. But uh, I'm really pleased with this. Can't wait to uh, zip these together. Maybe put a little uh, bit of P38 down and uh, set those uh, zip ties in there and draw them really tight nicely to the uh, to the back. Uh, obviously, we can't do that until uh, the trim's completed. Uh, but I will be just putting some zip ties around just to keep them in their shape. This also helps for when you do take it uh, all apart. If you've got a few zip ties around holding this sh general shape of wires, you unplug everything and you can just lift it out as a mass and they all stay roughly where they were. So when you reintroduce it after it's been leathered, uh, you know roughly where it's all gone. Obviously take some pictures as well. Anyway, so uh, it's all good. So we are down to these last few wires. Uh, this is mostly uh, to go into the hazard. Um, certainly these green wires, I think. And then we've got some others. So we just need to follow those through and uh, see what the instructions say. Um, and uh, I think uh, I think that's all good. Uh, what else have I got over here? Ignition, done the ignition. I'm pretty sure, so the red goes into the middle because that's providing the power and then you turn uh, the ignition key to, to the next one and I'm pretty sure it livens up both of these. So obviously it's gonna send some power off this way and also to this orange cable, which you have to add, not necessarily orange, uh, to the starter button. So uh, so then when you press the start button, that uh, sends the signal through and uh, starts the starter motor. Uh, an important update here is uh, this is incorrect for the fog. Uh, this blue red is actually for the main lights. So I need to take that off and extend it over to the main. Uh, the new color, which I don't think is still updated in the instructions for the fog is blue orange. Blue orange is now the fog as well as uh as well as using the the uh the violet uh as well i believe um which uh goes to here and is jumper just so it also illuminates the fog when it's turned on so yeah blue red need to move it all right quick update here um i'm just short of a couple of terminals but uh got my fog lights uh wires laid out here and my hazard light wires uh, need to do some jumpers, need to feed all the way back to the indicators, so no problem there. Handbrake, apparently I was massively overthinking the handbrake. Um, I'm obviously going to have, that. this is a Savage handbrake uh, switch to engage the handbrake. It's going to have separate illumination, so when I turn the side lights on, all the dash and everything else illuminates separately. So uh, I was wondering how to make the warning light light up when the brake is engaged well apparently the wiring is all the same as if you had a manual handbrake uh blue red wire goes to the warning light here which is the same warning light that would also light up if there was low fluid uh, basically there's two wires at the very bottom of the circuit board here which do the uh send the signal to illuminate uh, you can see that's a blue red and uh, and an earth i think so when it's all engaged, it'll send the signal through and uh, and it will light up it will light up the light. I did have a query if you had low fluid as well that was lighting up the light and you engage the handbrake, would there be any kind of feedback or fuse blowing because you kind of got two sources lighting up the light uh, but I think I'm think 
and I've, I've been told I'm thinking about it too much and it'll just work. So we'll test that out very soon. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I've nearly finished all the switches here, hopefully with all their little jumpers. Uh, some of the wires are a touch thick, so a little uh, dot of solder in there as well to make sure that uh, uh, that all holds tight. Um, I think I've got all the connections there. I've got all the little jumpers. Uh, I've got a little jumper on the fog, side light over there. Uh, also a jumper from the side to the main. Um, jumper here on the hazard. Uh, so we're all looking good there, I think. Um, nothing's going to be too scarily wrong anyway. Uh, so all I've got left to do here is do an earth and I'm going to daisy chain them. So I'm going to go from the earth block uh, up here and then I'm going to earth, 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 earth. And for the lighting, I'm going to go from the lighting block here and go lighting, lighting, lighting. And not all of them are lighting because I think the fog light only lights up when you press it uh, so that you know you've pressed it. Um, what other one? I think that might be it. And of course I've got the handbrake here, so I want that to light up. Uh, so, so yeah, bear with me. Well, we are done. At least I hope so. So the last job was to uh, daisy chain some earth and the light uh, uh, power for the switches all the way back to my blocks there. So I've done all that. Um, put in the reset, clock reset and myelometer reset and programming button in here. Just had to take a little bit of the meat out the back side because uh, the threads are not that long. Uh, so that's uh, that's good and nice and handy just underneath the dash there. Uh, so that's it, uh, I hope. Right, so that's it for the dash wiring, I hope. I uh, hope I don't need to revisit it, but it shouldn't be too many issues if I do. And uh, of course I will document that or make changes on this video if uh, I have messed anything up uh, severely. I uh, can't put in the stereo yet uh, because I need to wait until it's leathered, then I can mount the cage so that I can get the stereo face uh, flush exactly with the leather. So that will come. Uh, only a couple more bits of wiring left to do, and that is uh, such things as the fuel sender in the boot and the fog and reverse lights. Um, apart from that, uh, we are going to do the windscreen and boot and bonnet in the next video. So I'll see you again.